Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. Have you guys noticed the winter is over, spring is back and well in a few weeks it's even going to be summer. And it's a fantastic time to take pictures outside and more importantly taking pictures of the flowers and, um, and the trees and all the bees and everything but up close. Well, how to do that? This is macro photography and as many of you may have noticed, uh, macro photography or macro lenses um, are not cheap. Uh, they're very expensive, they're real macro. So what do we mean by real macro? Macro photography is when you get very up close to the subject and the real macro lens will enable you to get a ratio one one. So what that means is the size of your subject will be exactly the same size in the picture. So if I take a subject that is going to be one centimeter, on my uh, final exposure, it should represent one centimeter as well. Many lenses, uh, especially zoom, um, telephoto, you may see the macro options on it. And instead of having a ratio one one, you can find ratio one four, maybe one three. So that means that it's no real macro. It will enable you to get very, very close, closer in fact that what you should be able to do with a normal lens, but it's no real macro. Macro lenses cost, I think, around a minimum of 300 pounds or something like this, and that's for one one. And then you can even get more than that. You can get two one, meaning that your subject will appear twice bigger in your photography, or even even more if you're talking about two, three, and so and so on. So. Uh, is there an alternative to macro lenses? Well, yes, there is. There is what we call extension tubes. And what extension tubes are, really, is, well, they're just tubes. You see, there's no glass, there's nothing in there. And so why does it work? Well, you may have noticed that on every lens, you have a minimum distance to uh, be able to um, focus correctly. So most of the time it goes around 45 centimeters and, and beyond, or even wide angle enable you to get a little bit closer, something around 20 centimeters or so. Um, but the distance is not between the front of your lens and your subject, like many people must think. No, the distance, the minimum distance to focus is from the sensor to the subject. So all the film in your know, film uh, uh, SLR, if you have one. So what the extension does is that it gets your um, camera at the same distance, but your lens can get closer to, uh, to the subject. And the great thing about this is that uh, they usually come by three and uh, they have a different lens. So you see this one is 31 millimeter, meaning that you're getting 31 millimeter closer to your subject in order to focus. Then you have another one that's like 13. And here you have this one is 21. So you can combine the three of them or the two of them any way you want. And so where do you put them? Well, very simply, here you go. You've got your lens, you take the cap off the back, Rather than actually uh, screwing your lens to your DSLR, what you do is you take the extension tube and you're going to screw it to it. And it's the extension tube that's going to screw to your camera. And you realize that when I'm going closer with this type of lens, this is my 18135, and on it, it does say here that I need to be 45 centimeters away from my subject in order to be able to focus. Well, with this thing, is that I've combined my 21, my 13, and my 31. So that makes 44, 65. That makes 65 millimeter that I've gained. So 65, that's 6.5 centimeters, right? So rather than actually being 45 centimeters away from my subject, I can in fact be only 39 centimeters. So that's really, really good. So I get really closer. And a good thing about uh, you can use it on any type of lens, that doesn't matter. You can use it on telephoto zoom, you can use it on prime. I've used it with my Nifty 50, you remember my 50 millimeter lens, uh, prime lens. But the good thing about using it on zoom lenses is that you will realize that it's, rather than actually playing with the focus, you will use the zoom to go closer or farther from your subject and that's how you're going to focus. 
One thing to keep in mind when it comes to macro photography, because you, if you had looked at uh, some lenses, you may have been surprised that the the narrower aperture you can get is sometimes 95 or even more than that, uh, and that's not um, that's not the usual aperture that we would see in landscape photography or, or, or portrait photography. But the reason why is because you remember the depth of field, right? We talked about the aperture and how we affect the depth of field. So the wider aperture, the shallower the depth of field. Well, the uh, aperture is not the only thing that affects the depth of field. The distance between you and your subject will affect the depth of field. So the closer you get to your subject, the shallower the depth of field. Remember the last video when I did the uh, review, it was Tom Miggett. Um, one of my photo was a photo of my daughter and I told you I shot with 2.8, but I was extremely close to her, really, really too close. So the 2.8 plus the distance, uh, the lack of distance between me and my daughter made a very shallow depth of field, so uh, half of her face was actually a little bit blurred and affected by this shallow depth of field. So the same applies here. The closer you're gonna get to your uh, flower here or your subject, it can be an insect for example, well, the shallower the depth of field. And so in order to compensate for that shallow depth of field, you're gonna need a very, very narrow aperture. So that's the reason why macro lenses will enable you to go at f45 and even beyond. So one, a little advice, because those extension tubes are really cheap. Uh, those are from Jessup's and you can get them for around 50 pounds, um, but, if you do some research on whether Amazon or eBay, you may notice that you can find some that are actually cheaper than that, something like around 10 pounds for the three rings. Well, one thing to watch out for here, there are rods um, and uh, you're not gonna see it very well, but inside there are rods and what they do is they basically make the contact between the chip on your uh, lens and your camera and what it does is that although in macro photography most of the time you tend to use manual focus because your camera is really um, not powerful to, uh, to focus correctly. So um, what it does, what those rods do, is that it will transmit the information between your lens and the camera and you will get this validation, um, this focus validation that you, you, you get uh, most of the time. Um, another good thing as well is it will, um, if you don't have those uh, and your lens does not have a mechanical aperture ring, uh, you will struggle because your camera won't be able to actually give the correct aperture. So when I decide on my camera to choose an aperture of f22 for that matter, well, having extension tubes with rods inside will tell my lens, okay, now you need to use an aperture of f22. Uh, and if I didn't have the rods, well, that information would be lost and I would not be able to change my aperture, meaning that I would always uh, be taking exposures at uh, the widest aperture, which is on this one, 3.5, or even on my 50 millimeters, that would be 1.8, which is going to give you an extremely shallow depth of field, very, very hard to work with. And one thing to uh, keep in mind as well, when you do macro photography, there is two things that you hate. Camera shake. So you need a very sturdy tripod. And um, I will talk about my tripod in another episode very soon, because my tripod is actually particularly good for macro photography because it has uh, an arm that is made for uh, to go uh, horizontal and uh, to get closer to your subject. So I'll talk about it very, uh, very soon. Um, so camera shake, but then your subject may shake. As you can see, there's some wind here and um, well, any movement will uh, double or triple, or even get worse when you do macro photography. So what I tend to do is I use, I can use my reflector and I tend to put it, you know, wherever the wind comes from. So like this, and I, and I try to block the wind. I can even use my hat. Uh, you see today I'm wearing a hat and I, I would tend to go something like this here. Um, as you get very close to your subject, you may want to use a flash, uh, a flash gun. 
Um, the problem with the pop-up flash that you have on the camera is that it's so tiny and because your lens will be really almost touching your, um, your subject, uh, the light from the pop-up flash might not uh, reach the subject. So that's why you want to you want a flash gun, you want to be able to go around. Or uh, a great alternative is to use a ring flash. So what it is, it's a flash but it goes around your lens and uh, it goes it plugs itself onto the hot shoe on your um, camera. So um, this is it folks, this is all I wanted to tell you uh, about the extension tubes. A very, very cheap uh, option for you guys. If you want to start in macro photography but you do not want to spend 300 pounds or even more because you don't know if you're going to like it. Um, all right, so really enjoy the weather, uh, take full opportunity of it, and until next time, this is Tommy Gutsang. If you like it, well, capture it. <laughs>